having a good dream for so far? Can't believe it's only like barely the middle of day one. Crazy. My name is Michael Kolodner. I'm uh, an independent consultant. I work with nonprofits doing program management on the platform. I'm a member of the Salesforce MVP Hall of Fame as of yesterday. And something, thank you. And something you might not know about me, I am the chairman of the board of a children's theater company. Let me give you a quick introduction to me and my trailblazer journey. I did not set out to become a Salesforce admin. I was going to be a diplomat, I was going to be a foreign service officer and solve the Middle East peace crisis. Ask yourself how that worked out for me. Anyway, long story short, that didn't work out so well. I spent 10 years as a full-time stay-at-home dad. And then in my first job back in the workforce, um, we needed CRM. And I was asked to go look at the options. And I came upon this Salesforce thing, which sounded good because it's free for nonprofits. We'll get there. Anyway, we implemented Salesforce. And despite the fact that databases had kind of followed me my entire career, this one actually made sense. I could make it do what I wanted it to do. And I was so blown away by the Power of Us community, the community of nonprofit Salesforce practitioners who were so generous with their time and their wisdom. So I got more and more involved. I got a full-time job as a solo admin. And eventually, um, at the beginning of COVID, I went on to become a full-time independent consultant. My newest endeavor, about 18 months old, is I have a blog. If you've read my blog, raise your hand. We have a few, thank you. Um, freelikeapuppy.tech, it's Salesforce advice in a nonprofit context, although much of what I teach has much wider application. Um, please like and subscribe, as they say. And I have stickers available. If you come up to me afterwards, I have them in my bag. So please come get stickers. All right, now let's get to what you're actually here for. I know, that was a little bit. All right. So. I don't know about you, but I always have this little voice in the back of my mind, sort of wondering, worrying that something I built isn't going to work right. Do you know when that user comes up to you and they say, the report's not working? My first thought is, oh god, what did I do? Right? Did I break something? Or is it just that the data's not clean? Or worse yet, like, is the unclean data going to cause some automation I built to blow up in my face? My biggest bugaboo is duplicates. They seem to always respawn, right? They're coming in from lazy users or some integration. So we need to find a way to tamp those down. I'm just going to pause here for a moment because I think this GIF is hilarious. So we'll just let this. All right. Um, I hope you're here with me because you too think dirty data is a problem. I assume that's why you're sitting here or standing in the back. So of course, dirty data comes in various kinds. You could have contacts without an email address. That's dirty. Good luck contacting that person. Opportunities without a campaign. If you want to know where that money came from, you probably need to fill that in. You could have mistakes that your users made. Opportunity contact roles that don't meet your requirements. Automation that maybe didn't work. Wrong fields or using a different unused, unused field. For example, I've had orgs that had at least three and sometimes four gender fields. Thank you, managed packages. Right? So you got to make sure you're using the right gender field, or your reports are going to be different. Don't even get me started on the middle name fields, or the one client that actually had a birth date field that I don't even. OK. Um, so what is a dashboard of zeros? A dashboard of zeros is a place to look regularly for data that's outside of your defined normal. And it's your defined normal. We're going to talk about that. You're going to look. For, you're going to build exception reports to look for that data. And those exceptions, you're going to bring the numbers down to zeros. Because, and, and, and you're going to break it up so that as you bring those things down to zeros, you can work in small chunks because it's way more palatable to work in little pieces and have some quick wins and work your way toward the zeros. When you first get started, new import, start looking at data you haven't looked at, you might not be at all zeros. That's OK. This is a tool. And you're using it to help you work toward your goal. But that goal keeps receding into the distance. So this is a continuous process. It might even just take you a while to figure out what you want to look for. I'm constantly coming up with new dashboards of zeros I need to install for different clients. 
And also, you might work on a different schedule, right? Some data, like those duplicates, I want to quash those daily. I want to check every day. I want to fix those duplicates and move on with my day knowing that I at least started the day with no duplicates. But others, you might only check weekly. If you're looking at user logins, you know, give them a couple days. Maybe they were out on Monday. You could check monthly. You could even check some things yearly if you want to run a report of reports that haven't been run for at least a year, because maybe there's some cycle they're on. Probably a year it's run that cycle. Probably if it hasn't been run again, it's time to delete it. But you're, you're going to have to figure out the schedule, and you might make multiple dashboards of zeros. OK, and what do you do when you find those exceptions, right? I love this as a way to increase chatter usage. I think chatter is really useful. Um, you can just write in context, right, on the record, hey, this person doesn't have an email address. Can we fix that? Hey, this, this contact and this contact look like they're potentially duplicates. Would you merge them? Real easy, done, no copying links, et cetera, et cetera. Now, chatter's public, right? So don't, make, don't embarrass someone by having that chatter feed like sit there forever that shows that they entered something wrong. But if you're going to send them an email so it's at least outside, like lighten it up, right? It feels not great to get that email scolding. So, you know, just tone it down. All right. I found four basic report methods we're going to use in our dashboards of zeros. The first, talked about it, right? Duplicates. Everything in this section comes directly from Trailhead. So you don't have to take specific notes as I go through here. At the end, I'll give you a link to resources, including the Trailhead module with duplicate management. But basically, when you turn on duplicate management, you set up a custom report type to look for contacts or accounts with duplicate record items. Those are the report items that tell you there's a potential duplicate. So for example, we got three contacts here. They may be duplicates. I don't know. I'm going to have to talk to the program staff. The top two, actually all three of these, share the same email address. So probably duplicates. Two of them have different record types. So it's possible that Luke's father is also named Luke, in which case they're not actually duplicates, and that's OK. But we know his father is not named Luke. So we probably need to figure this out. And then I don't know if you noticed that Luke Skywalter at the bottom, probably a typo. Right? So we're going to fix that. All right, that one was easy. We ready to move on? OK. So the next is pretty easy as well. This one's pretty obvious, blank fields. Now, I'm not talking about fields you don't use. I'm not talking about fields you should hide or remove from your org. There are apps like Field Trip and others to help you look for that kind of systemic problem. I'm saying we know we use this field, and it's important to us, and it's blank. That's a problem, so let's go in and fix it. Oops, <laughs> right? OK, we have some accounts in the org. We know they're grant makers. But we're missing some of our grant maker information. Good luck figuring out what to do if we don't know what they're, if they're a fit, right? If they're a good funder for our organization. So I've made a simple report. What I've actually done is I've kind of combined, you could make this three reports, right? If grant maker is true, one and, two or three or four, right? If grant maker is true and one of these is blank, that's a problem. You could do, three different reports, but then you're going to have three different components on your dashboard and you're going to run out of space. But if you have extra space and you want three nice little zeros to feel good about yourself, that's fine too. Ready to move on? That one was simple. We're going to get a little more complicated. This is data that's not blank, but it's not what we're expecting. So for example, if you use different stages for different opportunity record types, which is kind of the point, right, then you might need to watch for records that have some kind of a stage record type mismatch. 
Maybe somebody changed the record type because they realized it was wrong, but they didn't change the stage to the new proper stage. Um, or perhaps you had an integration that you configured incorrectly and it threw them in using the default record type and a stage you set. Or you imported data and did it wrong when you imported 1,500 records. So you have to know your org, you have to know what you did wrong, and your business processes. So here's a client. They work with kids starting in middle school. But I found someone who's marked as being in fifth grade. Does that mean the kid's actually in sixth grade? Or does it mean the kid's in fifth grade and they're not really in the program and they're a sibling or something that got into the database? I don't know. I know something's wrong and I'm going to talk to the program staff and we're going to clean this up and then we'll be back down to zero records on this report. What about um, current programs with no enrollments? Which maybe your organization will, you know, want to look for campaigns with no campaign members. <clears throat> Pardon me. If you have campaigns with no campaign members, what's wrong? Is it that these are programs for the spring and we just haven't gotten there? That's fine, okay. Your users are getting ahead of themselves, but that's good, they're preparing. But maybe there's another program in here, let's say Dewey Prep Fall 2023, that does have students, this one's garbage, and we should probably get rid of it. You could look for, this could get you know, deeper. You could look for opportunities with an amount that's less than your lowest priced product. Think about that one for a second, right? If you know what your lowest priced product is, you don't have any ops below that, unless there's a discount, but you can do the math on that one. Or opportunities for which the payment type field is blank. There's a lot of ways this stuff could be hurting you. All right, now, I'm gonna blow your mind a little bit. All right, so the last and most complicated of the report type, we're gonna use cross filters to look for records that don't have the right related records. So why do I have this slide? I am not setting off the age old debate of what is a sandwich, which clearly hot dogs, cheese steaks, and hamburgers are sandwiches, but we will just move on. I'm, I'm using it as a metaphor. Do we have data that's a filling with a bread of record type bottom and top? That's a sandwich, okay? So let. Oh, let's talk about report type for a sec. Here, we're building a report of opportunities without contact roles. This is an opportunities report type. If you make an opportunities with contact roles report, which you might be tempted to do, the word with is very important. An opportunities with contact roles report means they all have contact roles. So this cross filter ensures that you get no records because you've competed with yourself. So an opportunities report with no contact roles. You could also have data that's not bad data, but it's missing some kind of participation that you want to encourage. So here I have contacts, a contacts report, who have completed this organization, Modern Classroom Project's core program. <clears throat> They've completed the program. They have an enrollment and status complete. But they don't have, let's say, the top piece of bread, which is now that they've completed the program, they are eligible for graduate credits. But for some reason, they don't have them yet. Well, we want to make sure they get those credits. So let's look for those and then either reach out to the program staff or directly to the constituent and get them to claim those credits. You have to know your own organization. So I just mentioned Modern Classroom a second ago. Their core teacher training program, there's really no reason to complete it more than once. So if you have a complete, you probably don't need one that's in an active status or a pending status. Why are you enrolled for next month's program when you finished it? So let's get in and figure out, clean up the data. Okay, so you have your four report types. You've built yourself a pile of reports. I hope you've organized them in folders where you can find them. And now you're gonna build a dashboard or multiple dashboards. It depends how many reports you've come up with. Or if you wanna segment them for different teams, 
or different types of data, and of course I talked about timing. So we're going to use my favorite component, which is the metric component. It's a number, and it can be color-coded. The key here is you're going to invert the default color scheme, because zero is good. Zero is green, and anything above zero is either yellow or the dreaded red. Right? So you're going to invert the color scheme, and then you're going to build the dashboard. It's important to know your audience. Are they working on a teeny tiny laptop screen? Make the numbers big. Scare them with those bright red 12s or whatever. Right? If it's just for you, you can probably abbreviate the titles. If it's for more general users, you probably want to make the titles clearer or use footnotes, whatever it takes to build that understanding. And then subscribe, right? Let that dashboard come to you. Tell your friends, your colleagues, tell your colleagues to subscribe to it as well so they can help you keep the data clean. The whole point of subscribing is it'll come in your inbox, right? 9 a.m. every weekday, I'm going to clean up those duplicates, and then I'll just start my day clean. Favorite it so you can find it. This is all in the service of making sure your data is in tip-top shape because this is winning. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate you coming to my session. Thank you. Please rate the session in the app. If you don't already have the app, I don't know how you made it this far today, um, but please download the app. You should get uh, my session or my survey's link. Please rate it. I like to know how you felt about it, so they'll bring me back to do this again. And I promised you resources, so you can follow this QR code or go to my website slash DF23. I have links to the Trailhead modules and to my blog, et cetera. And I'll wait. I'll let people take the time. Has a link to Free Like a Puppy as well. And if you would like to come up and get stickers, I will be right over here. Thank you, everyone. I hope you're having a great dream force. If you liked my session, I'm doing it again tomorrow. Please tell those you run into in the forest and in Yerba Buena, et cetera. Uh, tomorrow, I forget, like three-ish? Go with three-ish. Has the same name. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We would love to get your opinion on this content, so please leave us some feedback on the comments section below. If you did like this content, give that like button a tap. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the Salesforce Admin's YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about being a Salesforce admin in general, head on over to admin.salesforce.com. Thanks again.